The 251 is the most common chord progression in jazz. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the basic things that you should practice if you want to improvise over it. And I'm also going to show you how you take that material and turn it into some great lines so that when you're improvising over a 251, it actually sounds like jazz and not like you're just noodling in a scale. My name is Jens Larsen. Learn jazz, make music. If you look at the C major scale, then for each note in that scale, we have a chord. That's what's called the diatonic chords. And for C major, that gives us C major seven, D minor seven, E minor seven, F major seven, G seven, A minor seven, B half diminished, and C major seven. The two, five, one progression is a progression that sort of takes us to the root of the key, so the C major. It starts on the two, so that's a D minor seven, then it moves to a G seven, and then resolves to the C major 7. And if we put those chords together and play them a little bit closer to each other, then we get... Now that you know what the 2 5, one progression is, then we can start looking at some exercises that are going to give you something that you can use when you solo on this progression. When you play a solo in jazz, you're improvising melodies and lines that are closely related to the chords. So that means that it makes sense to practice the melodic version of those chords, which is the arpeggios. A great way to practice them would be to play them directly on the chord progression. That would be something like this. Notice that I'm playing these arpeggios as one octave arpeggios and they're all in the same position. And that's just because I want to have it so that they're kind of easy to play, but also so that when I start to solo, I can later connect them because I don't want to skip around the neck to get to the different arpeggios that I need to use. If you practice soloing just using the arpeggios, then you're very clearly connecting to the chords and you can still create really solid lines, something like this. To really make the chord changes clear, then I'm looking for notes that are not in the chord that I'm playing on now, but are only in the next chord. And then I try to play towards those notes and play those notes on beat one of the next bar, because then you can really hear, now we get a different note, we get a different chord sound, and that makes the chord change really clear. So that's what I'm doing in the example as well, where you can see that I'm playing the B on beat one of the G7 and the E on beat one of the C major seven. The way that I'm playing the arpeggios as these one octave melodies is something that you can also work on taking through a scale in a scale position. And if you do that, then you have access to all the arpeggios that are found in the scale in one place on the neck. And that's a very powerful thing to actually have access to because that means that you can do the previous exercise for any progression that you can come across. That exercise sounds like this. I have another video where I'm talking about this exercise and I think it's a super useful exercise for connecting the harmony with the scale exercises and the arpeggios. So in that way it really brings a lot of things together that are just very important for playing jazz and something you definitely want to work on. There's a link to that video in the description. Later in this video I'm going to show you how this exercise can become a gigantic shortcut and give you a lot more material that you can use on any chord in this scale. As you could see in the beginning of this video, then the chord progression is in the key of C major and everything is actually found within that scale. So it makes sense that before we start working with all the bebop tricks and chromatic notes, we just want to take the arpeggios and then also add the scale notes because that's sort of the immediate context that's found around those chords. Those are the notes that we want to use as well. So if we look in this position, then the C major scale sounds like this. Again, it really makes sense to take exercises and scales like this and then try to really put them onto the progression so you can hear how they work. And in this case, we can do that quite easily because we can add the scale notes around the arpeggios and then you get an exercise like this. Like this, you can hear how the scale works for each chord and you can still hear the chord because I'm sort of playing the arpeggio. So all the chord tones are on the beat and the scale notes are then in between the beat. This way of practicing the scales on the chords is something that I learned from Barry Harris, even though he tends to mostly ignore the two chord and then just play the five chord for an entire two five. The next thing we can do is to start making some licks with this and that sounds like this. So 
so here we have a lot more options when it comes to what melodies we now can create, but I'm still using the chord tones. They are still sort of the notes that are tying us to the chord that are making the harmony clear. And I'm playing those mainly on the heavy beats, so on beat one and beat three. You can also still hear how the changes are still pretty clear if you play this lick without any backing. Besides playing lines that are really connecting with the chord changes, then another part of the jazz or bebop sound is that you use chromatic leading notes. And you can of course turn this into all sorts of complicated rule sets, but I think if you're just getting started with this, then really what you want to do is that you just want to experiment with adding some chromatic leading notes to the arpeggios that you use when you improvise, so the chord tones, because then you have this strong pull uh, of the chromatic leading note that resolves into the chord. That's just the strongest resolution when you're improvising. And that means that you can make lines like this. Here the chromatic notes are placed before a chord tone and they sort of really help spell out the changes and they also sometimes help just really making the chord change clear because I'm using them moving from one chord to the next. So I have the C sharp before the D and I'm also using the chromatic leading notes to really change chord in a very clear way because here I'm using the A sharp to lead to the B on the G7. So in that way, it's really sort of emphasizing that B, making it really clear that the chord is changing. The same happens when I'm going from D sharp up to E on the C major seven. And once you start getting a little bit familiar with using these chromatic approach notes to the chord tones, then you can of course expand on it and try to target notes that are not in the chord, or maybe use them as suspensions so that you create a little bit more tension and make your line a little bit more surprising. Here you have some chromatic notes that resolve to scale notes, not to chord tones. So in the first bar you have a D sharp on B3 that's resolving up to the E, so the ninth. And uh, I'm also using sort of a suspension. So usually you would want to put the B, the third of the G7 really on the one to make it clear. But here I'm delaying it and that's just another way of creating some tension and resolving that. So on B1 we really get the A sharp, that's not really a note that fits in there. And then I resolve that on the one end. Uh, I'm using the A, A flat, G to go to the C major seven. And I also have a leading note on the C major seven that's just to a chord tone. So just approaching the third from below. As I said earlier in the video, if you practice your arpeggios in the scale like this, then you get access to a lot more material for each of the chords. In fact, you just get twice as many arpeggios that you can use for each chord. Let me show you how that works. So if we take a look at a C major seven arpeggio or a C major seven chord, then we have these notes, C, E, G, and B. When you're playing a solo and you're using the C major seven arpeggio over a C major seven chord, then that sounds good and that works because you're just playing the notes that the one playing the chords are also playing. So of course that works together. Since the arpeggio, so C, E, G, and B sounds good, then another arpeggio that has pretty much the same notes will probably also work. And that could be the arpeggio from the third of the chord. So that means that we can of course have the basic arpeggio and then we can start from the third, that's the E. Then we have those notes as well. This you can take to all the chords in the two, five, one. So that means that over a D minor seven chord, you can also use an F major seven arpeggio. Over the G7, you can also use a B half diminished arpeggio. And of course, on the C major seven, as you just saw, you can use an E minor seven arpeggio. And this material you can use, and of course also combine with chromaticism, and then create a line like this. If you want to explore this in more detail, starting with the exercise of the diatonic arpeggios, and then going through all the great things that you can do with this, some really neat bebop tricks and also just some great sounding licks, then check out this video called The Most Important Scale Exercise in Jazz.